What's up beautiful people, today we're going to be checking out early morning mayhem and plenty of fireworks when Vivek Ramaswamy appears on CNN with Don Lemon. I heard this one was very interesting, so let's get to it. Fox News Republican presidential candidate and tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy. So we are happy to have you. I'm going to talk to you more than just about Fox News, but good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. What do you make of this uh, decision to settle this case? I mean, it seems strikes me as a cost of doing business. If you're going to be a news network, I think it's happened to CNN. I think it's happened to a lot of news networks. That has it's not a happened cost to doing business. That has not happened to CNN. This is never been sued for defamation. Never been, never not, been actually this settled. Is the largest it's, it's definitely in large. And, and Fox appears to have the largest viewership in the market capitalization. So I'm not familiar with the details of this case. I'm actually more interested in issues relating to this country than disputes with media companies. But I will say that it mm -hmm. strikes me that from. But you're, you're, not familiar, honestly, you're not familiar with the case. You're not familiar with the lies about the 2020 election, about the election being stolen, that Dominion was somehow, you know, uh, fixing the votes. I mean, that's why they seven hundred eighty seven point five million dollars. You're not familiar with that. And you're running for president. The details of a private dispute between a commercial dispute and the details of what the dollar it's figures are. That's not where I public. Spend, it's not that, that's really not where I spend public. my time. But, but what I will say is, look, there's defamation cases. People settle businesses. If you settle business disputes, Fox settled this one. It's actually not, I think, the pressing issue for the nation of what Fox News' settlement well, I, is. I, Should Vivek be familiar with it? I disagree with, with that. A, because with as you, you just admitted, you said Fox is the Plano. largest viewership, one mm -hmm. of the largest viewerships among television networks, and especially cable networks. Considering the eyes, the, the American people who are tuning in to Fox News to get their information and to get it accurately, I'm surprised that you would say that you're not concerned about this and this is not a, something that is hugely pressing for the American Here, people. Here's the way I the look at it. freedom of the press is the First Amendment in the Constitution. Oh, exactly. You nailed it. The freedom of the press. So we have CNN. We have Fox. I'm here with you guys. I go on Fox News. I think that that's great that we have a marketplace of ideas in this country. What I worry more about, Don, is the trend that we see in this country to controlling what different parties are actually able to say. The American way to bad speech is more speech. And so I think we need to actually embrace that culture mm -hmm. and a more diverse okay, marketplace of ideas. With, with all, That's something we haven't done well enough in this country. With all honesty, you're not answering the question. You're giving us platitudes about... I'm actually unsure what your question is, Don. Do you want somebody to bash Fox News on no, CNN? No, I'm not asking you to bash actually, Fox I wouldn't. News. I'm asking you to yeah. be honest yeah. about what happened on Fox News, about the lies that were told and them having to admit uh, the lies and paying the largest defamation settlement to a media company in history, and you are a frequent guest on that network. Are you concerned about the credibility? Are you going to continue to go on that network even with those credibility? Issues? I have far more concerns with the credibility of what we will call the mainstream media than I do with the credibility of Fox News. But Fox I'll, is the mainstream media. At the end of the day, what I say is, Look, neither you nor I know the details because they settled it before it went to trial. I think the obsession, I think the obsession over this is a little back, weird. Back, listen to that. <laughs> I, I, I what does the lemon want to hear particularly? I don't understand the question as much, too. I get into that. There's I'm real not, issues to talk about in the country. Obsession. Why are we talking this about Fox News and the settlement? This is a very big and important story. And I'm not going to, we have much more that we want to talk about. I think we should. About, mm -hmm. But we will get there when we're ready to get there. We have you on to talk about these issues. This is a very important <laughs> issue and it should not be downplayed. This has to do with American democracy and Americans learning the truth about what happened in the 2020 election. You want to know what, you, you don't yeah, think that's I hear important? This, I hear a lot and about the comparing it to CNN is not, this apples and oranges. It's not the same thing. Well, it's, you know, different networks. Yes, apples aren't the same as oranges. You get one view through CNN, you get a different view through Fox News. I think that's good in our marketplace of ideas is that we have media that offers diverse perspectives. And you want to talk about threats to our democracy. One of the threats, and, I, and that phrase is an interesting one, threats to our democracy. I think one of the biggest ones is the chilling effect on speech in our country more broadly, where if somebody says something that a broad segment of the population or certain people in the government disagree with, there's an increasing trend in our country to silence that. And the answer to bad speech and alleged misinformation is not less speech. It is more speech in the marketplace of ideas. That's actually what a free press okay, well, really means. We're, we're, we're going to move on, but let, yeah. the, your mm -hmm. answer was good, but it's not about what's actually happened. It's not relevant to what's happening. I think the answer to what happened at Fox News is to tell the truth. Media companies are tasked with telling the truth. That did not happen in the situation, and that's why we're asking these questions. But let's move on. Let's talk more about a diverse exchange mm -hmm. of ideas. That's what I'm in for. Thank you. I'm glad you're here this morning. <laughs> your campaign slogan is a new american dream and i was reading through your platform last night um i wonder what you would do specifically to actually bring us together not just republicans and democrats what does unity look like 
to you, Vivek, for rich and poor, for rural and urban, for Republicans and Democrats? That is the right question to be asking. And I think the main divide in this country, and I say this to conservative audiences equally, is not between Republicans and Democrats. It is between those of us who are pro-American, embracing the ideals that set this country into motion. And I think an increasing strain in this country that is anti-American, that wishes to apologize for a nation founded on those ideals. But that's not a 50-50 split. I think most people are in the pro-American camp. And mm -hmm. Poppy, I think one of the ways they would say we get to national unity, some people think, is by showing up in the middle and compromising. I respect that view, but I reject it. You reject compromise. I reject compromising on our principles. I think that the right way to get to national unity, and I mean this, to unite this mm -hmm. country, is by embracing actually the radicalism of the American ideals mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. We celebrate our diversity and differences. I'm glad we have some three different shades of melanin on this set right now, <laughs> two different genders. That's fine, but what I say is, so what? That diversity is meaningless unless there's something greater that binds us together, that unites us across that diversity. And I'm running for president to revive those ideals that bind us together across our diverse attributes. I want to get into answer. a few issues, one of them being China. Before I get to sure. China, I, I just um, want to better understand something you said this week speaking uh, before the audience at the NRA. H here, here's what you said, um, referring to back to 1865. Here it was. I want you to raise your hand if you know when the first anti-gun laws were passed in this country. Raise your hand if you do. 1865. You want to know when it happened? We fought a civil war in this country to give black Americans the equal protection under the law that we failed to secure them in 1776. But then you want to know what happened? Southern states passed anti-gun laws that stopped black people from owning guns. The Democrat Party, then as in now, wanted to put them back in chains. Mm -hmm. Then as in now, that's quite an accusation about the current Democratic <laughs> Party. Who and what were you referring to? I was referring to Joe Biden and his expression of wanting to put them back in chains, dating back to Lyndon Johnson. I think Lyndon Johnson's so-called Great Society was one of the greatest misnomers in American political history, where even back then in the 1960s, 70 percent plus of black kids were born into two-parent homes. Today, that number is less than 30 percent in the opposite direction. The very policies that True. we implemented in this country in the name of helping black Americans have actually been disastrous for black Americans and all Americans. And I think so, that that's something that- we For some reason, people don't like to hear this, but there are statistics to show for it. You know, Candice Owen says it all the time, but people still fry her for it. And people totally hate her for saying it. Vivek is saying it as a presidential um, candidate, but uh, people will still like to hear it. We need to you wake up to- In 1865, you were talking about the black codes, right? That's right. Passed, enacted to make it a crime for a black person to carry a gun exactly. in the South. But you're equating that to the current president? You're referring to economic chains? What are you saying? Well, I, I was referring to Joe Biden's, I think, ill-chosen expression to say they're the party that wants to put you back into chains. What I'm actually saying is that if you look at the policies you of the modern Democratic that about Party. Democrats. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is that actually it's policies like that of Lyndon Johnson and Joe Biden that are actually holding it's black Americans. Lyndon Johnson back. the war on poverty? Yes, and in particular his great society where he actually created incentives in the family where if you're a family, you could actually get more money by not having the father in the home. What, Guess what you get? Of, you get what you pay for. Of, what, I think it's been really bad for the black community. I think it's really bad for all Americans. What, do you have anything on this before I move on I, to I China? Just, I don't see what one has to do with the other, but go on. I took up a lot of time with Fox. Oh, no, it's fine. One. We have time. I, I, don't, I don't really see what one has to do with the other, especially consider and using the Civil War to talk about black Americans. That war was not fought for black people to have guns. That's 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 not. That war was fought for black people to have freedoms in this country. Yeah. Actually, that's why the Civil War was fought. Okay. And the sad that part about it. That wasn't fought for, for black people to have guns, I think. Actually, you don't know, funny fact is black people did not get to enjoy the other freedoms until their Second Amendment rights were secured. And I think that that's but, one of the lessons that we still learned. aren't allowed to enjoy the freedoms. I disagree well with you country. on that, Don. I okay. disagree with you. And I think you're doing a disservice well, to our country. Okay. By failing to recognize when the you, fact that we have you already black the skin and you live in this country, then you can disagree with me. But we're not. You mentioned in here that I we disagree. Have different People said that's why he got fired. That statement right there. Yeah, because I haven't seen this interview, but that particular thing he said, I'm familiar with it. Let me take it back. 
I disagree with you countries. on that, Don. I disagree with you. And I think you're doing a disservice well, to our country okay. by failing to recognize when the you, fact that we have you are already black before the law. And you live in this country, then you can disagree with me. But we're not. Mm -hmm. You mentioned in here that I we disagree. have three I, different shades Don, of melanin. I think melanin we have to be able to talk about these issues. It sounds very personal. Like that statement does make it a little too personal. In the open, regardless of the color of our skin, black Americans today to say that compare that to 1865 and 1964 I think to you to compare absolutely it to 1865 and have equal rights. I, I think it's insulting to black people. It's insulting to me as an African American. I don't want to sit there and argue with you because it's infuriating for you to put that to put those things together. It's not right. Your telling of history is wrong. Your, what, what, your what part thinking, of the history was wrong? What, 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 what part of the history, history was wrong? That the Civil War was fought. You're making people think that the Civil War was fought for black people, only for black people to get guns and for black people to the have The Civil War was fought for rights. black people in this country to get freedoms, a noble mission. And I think that it, even yes, after, right. even after we succeeded, to, to we had to actually secure those freedoms. It, to reduce it in a speech at the NRA to say you're making people think or you're trying to say that black people uh, to get guns, that was, that, that was the reason that you're there at the NRA. That was the reason for, uh, for the Civil War. It I is think a that's fact. reductive. It's not and reductive, And I think it's Don. insulting. There are a whole plethora of reasons that uh, for look, the Civil with War. With due respect, I find, I find your explanation reductive and actually insulting, including to black Americans, to say that black people today, compared to 1964, 1865, haven't made progress in part because of the freedoms we secured. And the Second Amendment was black part people, of the Hang on, that please. Freedom. I cannot keep a thought if you guys are talking to me in my ear. So uh, hang on one second. So to say that, that black people, say, say what you said again. Black people secured their freedoms after the Civil War. It is a historical fact, Don. Just study it. Only after their Second black Amendment rights have, were secured. They That's were not fact. secured their freedoms after the Civil War. That is not, you, you are discounting uh, uh, Reconstruction. You're discounting a whole host of things that happened after the Civil War when it comes to African Americans, including the whole reason that the Civil Rights Movement happened is because black people did not secure their freedoms after the Civil War, <laughs> and that things turned around. People would try to change the freedoms that were supposed and to And you know how they the got Civil it? War they got their Second Amendment rights, and they actually got, the NRA played a big role in that. But today, down the fine... The NRA did the, not play a big role in that. They black Americans how to use firearms. That's, that's a lie. That's at, not. The NRA actually, did not play a big role This is just historical that. fact. But it's not the, historical the, fact. The, the part that I just find... because you say it's historical fact. The lady's even done. ...that I find insulting is when you say today black Americans don't have those rights after we have the gone through that civil rights revolution in this country. You are sitting here telling an African American about the rights and what you find insulting about the, the, the way I live, the skin I live in every day. Here's and where I you and I have the a different point of view. the freedom that black and white, that black people don't have in this he, country here, and that black people do have. Well, here's country. where you and I have a different point of view. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate I'm not saying you without me regarding views, you as a black man, but me regarding you as a fellow citizen. That you're sitting here, whatever ethnicity you are explaining to me whatever ethnicity about I'm, I'll what tell it's you, like to be black whatever America. ethnicity I'm, I'm, I'm I'll tell you what I am I'm an Indian American I'm proud of it but I think we should have this debate black white doesn't matter I think we should have this on debate the content of the ideas you do it you should do it in an honest way and in a I fair way and what you're doing is not an honest and fair way okay it, with, but we with, appreciate you coming on with thank due respect that. Don I look forward thank to continuing that conversation we'll thank you the conversation thank you so much Thank you, Pop. We'll talk about good. China. Yes, let's Next talk about China. Time you come back. Oh, thank you. Much to okay. say on declaring independence from China. Oh, they didn't even get yeah. to speak okay. on so China. Can on now, please. Thank you. Thank you. Because that was a pretty interesting video. I didn't really like how it went, though, because I did not learn anything from that video. It was just smoke and heated conversation that even the lady sitting next to them was tired of hearing it. <laughs> but I think... Vivek's response was quite reasonable. I mean, if somebody asked you what you think about Fox News and the defamation lawsuits and their settlement, it's a fair answer to say, I don't know so much about it. I know as much as you do because I've only heard about the settlement. I think that's a fair answer. You know, it feels like Don Lemon had specifics he wanted to hear and Vivek was not willing to provide that and he felt like Vivek was being dishonest. Um, I don't know, you know, those are just my, my views on what I saw, those are just my views, but I didn't really like that, even though that was an interesting interview to see the action and uh, the whole momentum, I didn't really like it because I wanted more, like I really wanted more. This is the end of this video, you know, share your thoughts on that one, um, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a very wonderful day. Peace. I made this bed on my own. Oh